Revly, Revly. All hands heave out. Revly. Welcome back, guys. Welcome to a nice, hot, sunny day in upstate New York. Today, I'm going to stake some pepper plants because they're falling over. They're top heavy. Now, as I said on an earlier video, today is my first full day of retirement. However, next week, I start a new job. A Navy related job so yeah I don't have a whole lot of time to to rest I need to prepare for my other line of employment it's gonna be similar to what I did before all right so today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stake some pepper plants because look at this one here it's falling over Yesterday, I cut a whole bunch of peppers. I gave them away to friends from Jersey. But this pepper, yeah, it's almost ready to harvest. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it turn red. I'm gonna let it ripe on the plant because we have way too many peppers inside the home right now. I don't wanna cut any more. So, I'm gonna go around and all the plants that are leaning over, I'm gonna use bamboo. I got some bamboo from Lowe's the other day. And I also, purchase three of these metal stakes. I wanna try them out. These are super simple. They're short, they're about two feet, foot and a half long or so. And these are four feet. The bamboo are four feet long. And I'm gonna drive it into the ground with a mallet. And yeah, then I'm gonna tie the plants to the bamboo. So I'm gonna take the first stake and I put it, I'm gonna put it right here next to the base of the plant that's leaning over. And I'm going to push it to the ground. Oh yeah, I didn't have to use a, a mallet. It goes in nice and smooth. And then I'm going to use a clip. I'm going to use two tomato clips so I can tie the plant to the bamboo. I'm going to put one clip towards the bottom. There's one, and I'm gonna use the second clip close to the top. There's the second clip. There we go. And now the plant has been staked. Check it out. So now it's not gonna lean over, it's not gonna fall over. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that to my other pepper plant right there. Now my jalapenos, they seem to be doing well. They're standing straight up. There's a big jalapeno right there. There's a couple at the bottom. But some of my jalapenos, as they get bigger, I may have to stake them as well. But right now they're looking good. So I'm just gonna do my King Arthur peppers, my big, my big peppers. And I think I have enough there for, yeah, for maybe 12 plants. And I have a whole bunch over there. You can use a mallet to drive the bamboo stake down, but the ground here is so soft, I didn't have to. Yeah, I harvested a whole bunch of peppers yesterday. one there we go that one's done so I have two done and let me tell you these uh, tomato clips uh, tomato plant clips they're they're really handy you can use it on just about any plant and they work wonders so I don't I don't want the pepper plants leaning over I mean it's not it's not bad if it does lean over and falls to the ground and the peppers grow on the ground, but I'd rather have them uh, go up, kind of like the tomatoes. Yeah, these jalapenos are doing good. They're standing straight up. Okay, so I'm going to do a bunch of pepper plants here. Look what I did. I, this is how I staked them a few, uh, about a week and a half ago. But... Now you, you can do this too if you don't have bamboo. This will work. But these are kind of small. I'd rather have 
the uh, bamboo stakes. Okay guys, so all the pepper plants that I wanted to stake are staked with bamboo and the tomato clips. Let me tell you, this year, up here in upstate New York, this is the best year for, for peppers, for me anyway. I planted peppers before, green peppers, for over a decade. I have never had so many before. My plants never did this good. It has, it's partly due to the compost and the soil up here. And look, beautiful peppers all over. So yeah, I'm gonna let them these obviously these are way too small but I could probably take these today I could probably harvest some of the bigger ones like this one right here you see that oh it's a, such a beautiful pepper look how big these are but I'm gonna leave them here because we have way too many inside the home and we gave a few away yesterday but still I noticed that we have more a lot more than I thought and that's because of some of the plants were leaning over and I could not tell till now that it looks a lot better now. It's organized, I can see the peppers a lot better. And nothing's touching the ground. Yeah, that's the way I like to see it. So yeah, these bamboos, they're cheap. It's just a few dollars at Lowe's and I like them. So now I'm gonna use the three metal stakes on my jalapenos. I want to try them out in a, in a second here. So this is a bag of my, yeah, tomato clips. Tomato trellis clips. Okay. All right, this jalapeno plant's leaning slightly over. So yeah, th this yesterday was packed with jalapenos and I gave a whole bunch away. But I I'm gonna use this metal stake and test it out, see how it turns out. All right guys, so I put the stake on the ground. I pushed it in and you see this hook? You see how this stem went around this hook here on the stake? Yeah, it's, it's holding it up very nicely. So I'm gonna use this other one, this other stake on this jalapeno plant here. So I'm gonna put it real close to the to the plant I'm gonna push it in and then try to get this stem around here you see that around here so let me see how am I gonna do this with one hand as I hold the camera with the other oh there he goes there he goes let me see if let me let me take these leaves off so you can see it better there he goes see that guys so it's holding it up nice and tight. See, the stems, two stems, went around this hook as I push this into the ground. So I have one more. And yeah, I kind of like them, but I kind of prefer the bamboo. The bamboo looks better, but these metal ones will still work. So I'm gonna go to the other side and I'm gonna stake this Jalapeno, even though it doesn't need it, this one here, I'm gonna do it anyway, cause it's gonna get heavy here in the next month or so. Push it into the ground, and I'm gonna get the jalapeno stamp around it, or I just, oh, it's even easier, guys. You just twist, you see this? Let me take these leaves off. You just bring the stem over and twist the metal rod around the stem. That's even easier. Well, wow, check it out. There he goes. Now this jalapeno has a steak. Yeah, I like it. All right, I like it more than I did a minute ago. So yeah, maybe what I'll do, if, if I can't find a bamboo, I'll get a few of these for the rest of my uh, jalapenos. Now the only disadvantage of this is that this particular plant is only going, it's only gonna be held up here at this point here. But with the bamboo, you can put tomato clips in many different areas, like 
at the bottom, at the middle, at the top. And as this plant grows a little bit more, I'll put another clip up here. That's something you cannot do with the metal stakes, but it'll work. It'll work for your smaller plants. Check it out, guys. I have this Cherokee purple tomato plant next to my, yeah, to my cherry tomatoes. And these things are huge. I've never grown Cherokee purples, but they're relatively big. So the plant has quite a few. All right, guys, since we're here, let's go and harvest some cucumbers and some cherry tomatoes. These are what type of cherry tomatoes? Sunguard. So we have a few here and a couple of cucumbers. Uh-uh. These are nice. Let me tell you, nothing like, I have a few, just a few for today. I'll probably come out here the next day or two and get some more. But there's nothing better than the tomatoes that you grow yourselves. Hmm. And this cucumber, this thing is huge. It's about seven, eight inches long. I'm gonna cut this one and this one too. Let's see if I can do this with one hand as I hold the camera. There we go. That's one. And I'm gonna go for the other one. Okay, here's the second one, and there's uh, a few more growing. You see this one here, another one there, a small one there as well. And this cucumber, it's halfway up the trellis already. See that? Oh, beautiful. Yeah, this trellis is working as expected. Every now and then I'll come out here and I'll train the plant to go that way because sometimes it wants to go the opposite way but you just use a tomato clip or by hand just move it gently like what I'm doing now see that it's beautiful there we go this is a small acorn squash it has about a week to go but we have a, a few bigger ones on the plant still. All right. I think that's gonna be it for today. Oh. Yeah, we have a few more acorn squashes in there as well. See that, guys? Yeah, I see like six or seven more. And check this out, guys. This is my dragon's breath pepper plant, and this is a super hot, the hottest in the world probably. Hotter than Carolina Reapers, which I have here. I have two, and two dragon's breath. Now the dragon's breath, they're starting to flower now. See that? Got a couple of flowers there. A bunch of little ones are about to pop up. Here too. And my Carolina Reapers, let me see. I don't know if they're flowering. Yep, they are. You see that right there? They're very, they're tiny. So these are the uh, Carolina Reaper flowers. Now, a couple of years ago, the Carolina Reapers, they were the hottest peppers in the world, according to the Guinness War Book of Records. But these are even hotter, the uh, Dragon's Breath. However, uh, the Guinness World Book of Records hasn't officially tested them yet. But uh, in other tests, these turn out to be 2.5 million Scoville units in heat. The Carolina Reapers are between 1 and 2 million Scoville units. Uh, an average of 1.5 million, but this is much, much hotter. So I don't eat hot peppers. I give them away. I have friends that will take them in a heartbeat. 
they do chilies with them and a few other things and that's exactly what I'm gonna do this year I'm just gonna ship it to Philadelphia once they once I have some peppers because I cannot eat anything this hot uh, that will probably burn a hole through my stomach and uh, look at that butternut squashes I got a few here this one down here it's almost ripe And of course, I have to say hello to my gandula plants, my pigeon pea plants. I'm excited about these. This is a, a, a midget type of plant. It doesn't grow that tall. Not unlike the, uh, the taller plants that are, you know, eight, nine, 10 feet long in Puerto Rico. These are supposed to grow only two to three feet high and they can produce pigeon peas in about 65 days, which is a record because in Puerto Rico, the taller plants can produce pigeon peas in nine months. And obviously I can't wait nine months because the winter is fast approaching. And I'm waiting for these to flower any day now. Well, may, maybe not. It's gonna take another month or so. And then we'll see flowers. Hopefully, keeping my fingers crossed. And one last thing, these are my celebrity tomatoes i have five of those plants and they don't grow as tall as the other types of uh, tomatoes and i like these these look more like the type of tomatoes that you would buy at the supermarket and look they're loaded every one of them is loaded and i've been lucky there has been no bottom end rot on any of them and if you do get bottom end rot on your tomatoes, it's either because you are watering unevenly throughout the week or it's a lack of calcium. So mine are doing fine. Here, I don't have to water that much. Even though I have a hose out there, I don't have to water maybe once a week because it rains up here at least twice a week.